Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. Today we go to Road America in the Xfinity Series, Darlington in the Xfinity Series, and obviously Darlington in the Cup Series. There you see your playoff grid coming in to Darlington. Alex Bowman, McMurray, and Austin Dillon realistically still have a chance to get into the playoffs if they have good runs here in Darlington today. But obviously we set our sights on the Xfinity Series race in Road America. We had Catherine Legg in the car and she started down the field quite a bit in 23rd. But I would expect her to be able to work her way up forwards pretty quickly because I know she's a road course ringer and she went into turns 1-3 wide there with the number 0 and the 42 of John Hunter Nemechek and she came out of the corner in the 19th position and she would at first continue to work her way forwards in this race as she looked up the inside of Kaz Gorala and taking over the 15th position. And she would get herself into the top 10, but she would end up making a mistake in the top 10 position and go off into the sand and completely lose that top 10 spot and sit P12. And that would kind of set the tone for the rest of the race as she would struggle to be able to rally back from this mistake in Road America. And by the time she came towards the final lap, of this race she, she would continue to be in the 12th position as she came into the final corner just in front of the uh, number 39 of Ryan Sieg not the best effort but certainly nothing to be disappointed about as Catherine Legg would come through down the front straightaway for the final time here in Road America just in front of the 39 of Ryan Sieg she would come through to finish in the 12th position so certainly a, a solid finish to say the least so I wasn't too disappointed with that uh, it would have been nice if we could have got a top 10 she certainly had the potential it's just uh, she made one mistake going into the sand and off track that put us behind in this race and now as we came to the Darlington race we had Derek Krause back in the car he's a possible driver for our uh, playoff pick because we have to choose a driver for the playoffs and he's certainly a top contender and out of turn one or out of turn two you get really loose there and he was certainly struggling with a loose car in this event and uh, he came through in a little bit later in this race getting loose again on the apron and that wouldn't be the first time but this wouldn't be the first time he got away with it now as he came through turns two he would get on the apron again and around he went for a big uh, crash and you hit the inside wall and it would completely take us out of the race and he would finish down in the uh, the 40th position so not a good finish for Derek Krause obviously a very disappointing event for him as he showed some promise at the very beginning of this race and he just got loose he hit the apron a few times made some mistakes and it costed him a chance at a good finish here in um, uh, Darlington so we'll see if he's in the car in the playoffs we still have two races to make a decision uh, Daniel Suarez will be in the car for Indianapolis but now it's time to set our sights on the Cup Series event uh, Darlington, a track that we won at in our rookie season off of fuel strategy. Last season we didn't even get a top 10, so uh, one win and no top 10, so that's how it's looking going in to this event. We made it to the third session in qualifying at a turn 4, coming down the front straightaway to come across the line. We had a 29.5 and we would better it to a 29.3, and we will start in the fourth position in Darlington on the top line, alongside our rival, Martin Truex Jr. Tonight, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series returns to Darlington Raceway for the running of the Bojangles Southern 500. This unique egg-shaped oval, also known as the track too tough to tame, has had a long history of tormenting drivers. However, more recently, a new tradition has taken root here. Darlington has become the home of the official NASCAR Throwback Weekend. So join us as we celebrate seven decades of NASCAR and take a fun trip back through time. Let's do some old school racing. All right, we are ready to go green here in Darlington. Joey Logano up front there on the pole. Daniel Hemrick uh, posted some fast laps in practice. The team should have a good race. Martin Triggs Jr. being warned right now that he's still angry. So we got to keep an eye out on him. He starts on our inside, our rival, of course. So it might get a little bit interesting here on the start if things go wrong as we get ready to take the green flag alongside the 19 of our rival. Martin Triggs Jr. The green flag is out. Joey Logano leads away, and Truex immediately is going to move his way up the track, crowding me over towards the wall but he has to stay on the inside because Kevin Harvick is there so thankfully we don't have to get put in the wall by the 19 of Truex though as we come through turns one and turns two on the first lap we already get into the wall getting our Darlington stripe but we come out of turn two without too much of an issue thankfully as it really didn't damage the cars we just barely got into it enough though to slow the car down as we went into turn three starting fourth falling back to seventh on this first lap as we look up the inside of Kurt Busch now as we come through turns three and turns four pretty even with him just about 
Savage will come down the front straightaway to complete this first lap here in Darlington with 23 to go in the stage as Kurt Busch comes over on us. And that's certainly a thing with the AI at this track is entering the corner for some reason. They'll kind of like uh, just turn left a bit before they enter the corner and come down on you. So you got to be very aware of that at this racetrack when you're on the inside of somebody going into a corner now. As you come into turn three though, looking to the inside of McMurray and through the center of the corner, we would get ahead of him and clear him for the fifth position as we came out of turn four. And by the time we came to the back straightaway on the next lap of lap three, we had a run on the back of the two of Kizilowski. And we're going to obviously hop on the opportunity and look up his inside as we head down towards turn three now. Pretty even through the center of the corner with the two of Kizilowski. But we would clear him through the center of the corner, move up into the fourth position and set our sights on teammate Kevin Harvick. And by the time we came to the back straightaway on lap four, looking towards turn three, we're going to try and set it up the inside of Harvick. And he leaves the hole open, so obviously we take the opportunity. And now we battle alongside with our teammate of Harvick now as we come out of turn four side by side with him down the front straightaway as we come through to cross the stripe hitting lap five with just 20 to go on this stage as we're going to continue to battle side by side into turns one Harvick does not want to give up the spot so easily now as we come through the center of the corner coming out of turn two he looks like he has the edge as we have to really get out of the, the out of the throttle to not get into him so obviously we give up the position there for a moment but we go into turn three again sending it up the inside of Harvick just trying to get that position from him but he certainly does not want to give an inch right now as we come down from straightaway still side by side as we head down towards turns one and here's our chance to maybe clear Harvick as we push up into him though and he gets into the wall a little bit 100% my fault on that part we just slid up and put him in the wall but we would get the position and by the time we came to lap 11 Kyle Busch would come through to make a pass on my inside and we would drift down back to the fourth position as we came across the line with 13 to go in the stage so it certainly seems like we don't have the fastest car at this point in the race, but hopefully we can maybe work on it and have a chance to win later on. Now as we come down the back straightaway, we came to lap 13 and getting into the wall at a turn two. And that time it would certainly damage the right side of the car, not what we needed, but as we came through, now approaching the lap traffic, this would allow me to gain some positions as Joey Logano got stuck in lap traffic, so we would move through to take the third position here with just eight to go now in the first stage as we went down into turns one and turns two. You see Kyle Busch and Truex, the top two runners up ahead, as the lap traffic here certainly hold up the AI, and that allows me to have a chance as we went down into turns one and two on lap 18. Now Truex and Kyle Busch right here as Truex looks to the inside of Brendan Gaunt, and as we exit turn two, allowing to look to the inside of Kyle Busch now as we come down the back straightaway. Truex driving away now that he's gotten past gone, but we would get up to the second position in uh, front of Kyle Busch. So a great uh, end coming here to the first stage. And by the time we came to the white flag, still the same situation. Truex quite a ways up there. Now as we come through turns one and two for the final time. Kyle Busch this time, though, right on our back bumper as we approach the 24. William Byron now as we look to his inside as he's having a terrible night so far down in the 30th position as we head down into turn three. And turns four for the final time here in this first stage. Kyle Busch about a half a car length behind as we come out of turn two. Martin Truex Jr., our rival, is going to come through to win stage one. And we're going to come through to get second. Really kind of undeserving of second. I think we were more like a fourth or fifth place car in this first stage. But lap traffic certainly helped me out here. So I uh, can't complain too much about that. And we would obviously uh, have to come to pit road. And we would take two cans fuel. Four tires would be certainly on the table. And we need to repair this car because uh, certainly we don't need this damage. It's one second of repair. So we might lose a position or two. Maybe not lose a position at all. But we would come to pit road and lose that one position. And we would start on the inside here for stage two behind Truex. Certainly don't want to do anything stupid with Truex now, but the green flag is out and stage two is underway now. Here we go behind the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. and on the inside just about of uh, Kyle Busch as we head down towards turns one. Obviously, like I said, Truex is our rival, so we don't want to get into him. We want to try and have a cool down with him because we don't want rivals as we battle with the uh, four of Harvick now. As we come out of turn two, making contact with the four and down the track we go, but we hang on to the cars and come back up to the track heading into turn three. So certainly... Uh, Kevin Harvick doesn't seem to be very clean with me today as that actually might have been my fault We did possibly wash up into him as we make contact with the 22 as well But certainly we've had our run-ins already with Kevin Harvick in this race So hopefully um, he's not going to be too angry with us now as we come through turns 1 and 2 Truex continues the lead over the number 18 of his teammate Kyle Busch As we exit turn 2 behind the 22 of Joey Logano now down the back straightaway Just in front of Jamie McMurray and his teammate of Kurt Busch as we head down into turns 3 
and closing in just a little bit on the 22 of Lugano, but on the exit of the corner, he is really able to pull away there as we come down the front straight away to come through and across the line and hit lap three of 22 in the second stage as Lugano looks to the outside of Harvick as we go into turns one and turns two. So certainly uh, a good start for the 22 of Lugano on the four of Harvick as we drifted back to fifth, not what we needed to have happen. And it was really a uh, tough time to get past these guys. But by the time it came to lap five, we looked to the inside of the 22 is up ahead. There's a car in the middle of the track blowing up and we're going to get You're down to the apron to avoid that. It's David Reagan and we would come up the track and hit the fours. I didn't even know he was up there and sideways we go, but we hang on to it and behind there's more trouble as Trace Elliott hits the, the 38 and around he goes in a big crash behind us as he comes back up the track and he gets hit by Bubba Wallace and the caution would fly here in Darlington. And things got crazy pretty quick here in Darlington as we would uh, stay out and get ready to restart P5 as we had another run-in with our teammate of Kevin Harvick as the green flag is out. We are underway once again. Truex continues to lead the field as we cross the line with just 14 to go now in this second stage as we head down towards turns one. Looking to the inside of the 22 of Lugano. Kyle Busch not with the best restart as we come through the center of the corner. Harvick going to try and get up ahead of him to get second as we come out of turn two. Making contact with the left rear of the 22 and once again just like last Sorry, we got shoved down the hill, but we held on to the cars. We went down into turn three on the inside of the 40 car of Jamie McMurray, who I believe is locked into the playoffs now as we exit turns four, clearing him as we barely tagged the wall. Thankfully, we did not get any damage from that as we would hit 13 to go in the stage as we went down into turns one and two. Now Kyle Busch would hang on to the second position. Joey Logano got past our teammate of Harvick, and he moved into third as we would be behind our uh, teammate now as we went down the back straightaway. Looking to the inside of Kevin Harvick now as we head down towards turns three and turns four, trying to get the position away from Harvick. We've had a good few battles with Harvick already, and he certainly hasn't wanted to give up on trying to hold me off, and as we come down the front straightaway, the same situation. He is not going to give up that position as we head down towards turns one, side by side with the four of Harvick, and he's going to try and hang on my rear, but we slide up in front of him and take over the position as Joey Logano has now moved into second as he sets his sights on Martin Truex Jr. And as we came to just two to go in the stage, we continued to run P4 and put a gap between myself and fifth place, but Joey Logano had passed Truex to take the lead as we came out of turn two down the back straightaway, setting our sights on Kyle Busch. Certainly uh, some of the strongest cars this season right now in the top five. We got Logano, Truex, Kyle Busch, myself, and we have certainly proven to be some of the strongest cars in the field. I think there's over 10 wins between us four combined as we come through to cross the line now to hit the white flag right, in the second go. stage. What Doesn't time? look like we're going to run down the 18 of Kyle Busch as we come through turns one and in turns two but certainly we can hold on to get a fourth place finish in the stage which is a, a solid finish nonetheless now as we come down the back straightaway Joey Logano a dominant season he won uh, just recently so he's trying to get another victory here in Darlington but he has to get a stage victory first as we come out of turn four Joey Logano is going to add another playoff point to his name as he comes through to cross the line to win stage two and we come through to finish in the fourth position in the stage so a good finish Almirola there in fifth Kyle Larson rounds out your top 10 for the stage finishing order. Kevin Harvick down there in 7th, so a, a good result for the Stuart Haas cars here in this second stage. We would come to pit road again for two cans of fuel and four tires, and hopefully we won't lose any positions, and thankfully we didn't, but we would once again restart behind our rival of Truex for this final stage. And Joey Logano would try to hang on to get a victory here. Now as the green flag is out, the final stage is underway in Darlington. Now as we come through to cross the line, it is just 40 to go. And we give Truex a little bit of a shot to the bumper. We know he's not going to like that, but we're trying to get the best restart possible as we come through turns one and turns two. We will have to make a green flag pit stop if it stays green. Now as we exit turn two, Harvick on my inside now. As we come down the back straight, we did everything I can there, or everything I could there, not to get in the wall because it's pretty hard to restart here on the top line now. Come through turns one or turns three and four. And as we come out of the corner, Harvick just in front of me as we get into his left rear just a little bit now, looking to his inside as we come through the front straightaway to cross the line to hit uh, lap 54 now as we head down towards turns one. And as we come through turns one and turns two, Lugano continues the lead as we come out of turn two. Harvick just in front of me still, but he gets a little bit sideways on the exit of the corner. We get sideways as well, and we get back onto the track though without any problems as we head down towards turns three. Kevin Harvick in that fifth position as Joey Logano continues to lead over second place of Kyle Busch as we come through turns three and four. Getting into the left rear now of the four of Harvick, so certainly um, continuously get, having run-ins 
with our teammate here of Kevin Harvick as we head down towards turns one and turns two all over his back bumper. We want to get past him because I felt like we were certainly faster than Kevin Harvick and I was being held up quite a bit by him as we almost just about turned him as we came out of turn two going down towards turn three just getting a little bit aggravated at this point with Kevin Harvick and I sent it up his inside just trying to desperately get the position as we come through turns three and turns four. We have the momentum down the straightaway but Harvick's going to continue to ride on my right hand door or my right side door as we head down towards turns one getting onto the apron a little bit there as we go for a slight slide and he's going to continue to hold up on that outside line and he would get clear of me as he came through turns uh, two now as he came down the back straightaway just struggling so much to get past our teammate of Kevin Harvick and you can see he's certainly holding us up right now as we head down into turn three again sending it up the inside as we try to slide up in front of him but it's not going to work as he continues to hang on on my right so uh, right side as we come down the front straightaway crossing line the line with 36 to go now as we head into turns one as we try to get clear of the four of Harvick and this time we do as we get into the side of him but thankfully we keep the car straight and hold on to the position and we would start pulling away with 28 to go but we were way too far behind at this point to run the cars up head down and I was certainly a little bit frustrated with Kevin Harvick uh, after that but uh, we had to set our sights on the top four and hope that maybe we get a caution to get to them now as we come down the back straightaway heading down towards turns three just trying to manage our race now and we know that tire wear is going to become an issue um, no matter what in this race so I was a little concerned about that as we came down the front straightaway Hamlin behind and by the time we came to lap 70 we were coming into lap traffic but it wouldn't matter because we would get that caution and we would come to pit road Eric Almarola at this point was leading we would come to uh, pit road to take one can of fuel and repair or no repair sorry and we would not take tires because we would fall back way too far I would actually go back in you see and um, I, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do so I readjusted it and stayed with what I had at first so we wouldn't take any tires because I knew we would lose way too many positions and we might regret that in the long run now to get ready to go green the green flag is back out and we are underway again Eric Amarola looking for win number one on the season he is, as he is the last car right now in the playoffs as we head down towards turns one and turns two Truex on my right Right hand side just about as we tried to look to his inside but unable to make it happen as we battle alongside the 11 of Hamlin now as we come down the back straightaway and now Kevin Harvick gets to my right hand side just what I wanted to see as we head down towards turn three and I really wanted to get clear of Harvick as soon as possible because we know how hard it has been to get around our teammate now as we come out of turn four side by side with the four of Harvick as he is certainly not going to give me the position as we cross the line completing the first lap since the restart as we head down into turns one and turns two continuing the battle with Harvick but we would just about clear him and we do clear him as we come out of turn two so much easier to get ahead of the four this time as we came down the back straightaway setting our sights now on the 11 car of Denny Hamlin as Eric Almarola continues to lead as we went down into turn three with a slight audio cut out there but as we come through the corner Kyle Busch looking like he might want to take the lead from Eric Almarola as we come down the front straightaway just running in that sixth position with just 12 to go at this point we would be continuing to run in P6 behind Denny Hamlin as we came through turns one and turns two just trying to run him down by the tires at this point we're certainly going away and I was a little bit concerned as we have trouble behind though Matt Benedetto goes for a spin and he's going to slide up the track and he's going to get hit by the 47 of Ryan Pease, a hard hit from the 47 as that would bring out the caution. And this closes us all back up, but the tire wear was certainly a concern at this point as the green flag is back out. Eric Almarola once again out in front with just nine laps to go as we cross the line as we give a slight touch to the back of the 18 to Kyle Busch as we head down towards turns one, getting a little bit aggressive trying to make sure I get to that bottom line because I know how much of these tires are wearing and how hard it's getting to turn this car and I don't want to be on the outside as we come out of turn two, just about getting into the wall now as we come down the back straightaway trying to stick with these top five cars as we head in turn three getting onto the apron as we go for a slide but we hang on to the car there as, as soon as I got on the brakes the car just slid into the corner but thankfully we held on to it now as we continued to hold on to the sixth position momentarily as we hit eight to go as we went down towards turns one and turns two Almarola continuing to lead over Truex and Joey Logano as Truex may be looking to the inside of Almarola as we come down the back straightaway continuing to run in that sixth position now and by the time we came to lap 86 we would get into the wall in turns one and two and that would allow the 40 of uh, McMurray to get into my right side actually as he would get past me and Kevin Harvick would get past me just brilliant as we came down the back straightaway though going into turn three getting a bunch of damage to our right hand side as we went into turn three and turns four
and Martin Truex Jr. had actually taken the lead from Eric Almarola at this point as we came down the front straightaway. And by the time we came to lap 87 now, we have a car blowing up ahead with just four or five laps ago. And it's Joey Logano as we head down into turns one and turns two. And that would bring out another caution, setting us up for a late race restart as Joey Logano would be staying out for this restart. We start on the outside and we might have a chance to steal a top five here as we've had a little bit of a dramatic end to this race now as we get ready to go green here late in Darlington. The green flag is back out. It's two to go and there's the inside being checked up big time as Logano stayed out with a blown engine and just like that now we find ourselves back in the top five as we look to the inside of our teammate Kevin Harvick as Truex tries to hold on to a Southern 500 victory now as we come through turns one and turns two. Kyle Larson our former teammate behind me in six and we're going to play a little bit of defense here because I want to hold on to a top five because we've ran in the top five most of this race up until the end when our tires have fallen off and now we have a chance to steal back a top five finish as we come through turns three and turns four. You see how much the tire wear is affecting me at this point as we come through the front straightaway. Truex takes the white flag as Danny white Hamlin flag. lurks behind him as we head into turns one and turns two. Three Stuart Haas cars here in the top five. Almarola, Harvick, and myself as we try to hold on to that final position inside the top five as we go for a slide as we exit turn two down the front straightaway just in front of the 42 of Kyle Larson as we head down into turn three for the final time going defensive over the 42 as we come through the center of the corner. Martin Truex Jr., one of the top contenders this season, will make it known as he comes out of turn four through the front straightaway. Truex will win the Southern 500 and we will hold on for a fifth place finish here in Darlington. Certainly a, a great finish considering we probably were going to finish eighth or ninth at the end there, but Joey Logano blows an engine, stays out, and then we have the opportunity to steal a top five here in Darlington. So uh, I'm very happy with that. Kyle Busch down there in 20th after he ran up front all race as well. Jimmy Johnson with a poor finish. David Reagan down there in 40th, 62 laps down. He basically DNF'd. So overall, a pretty crazy race, a very dramatic end to that race. And there you see the point standings. Kyle Busch is five points ahead of me in the regular season standings going into Indy. And if we can win the regular season championship, we can get a bunch more playoff points. But there's only one problem. It's Indianapolis, a track that uh, I struggle at a lot. And it, Indianapolis every season to me is just kind of a, a throwaway a throw away race. Uh, we just struggle so much at that track. And uh, I mostly just try to hang on and survive at that one. Uh, we're just basically uh, going there to see who can uh, be the final spot into the playoffs, really, between Almirola, McMurray, Bowman, and Austin Dillon. So uh, we certainly have some drivers who aren't very happy with me after that race. Not surprising. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very appreciated. Next episode, we will be going to Indianapolis in Xfinity and in the Cup Series where we decide the 16 drivers who will contend for a championship in this season's playoffs. We're locked in. Uh, many drivers locked in. It's really down to one position between Almarola and four or three other guys. So we'll see who can get that final spot in the playoffs in the, ne in the next episode. So I will see you guys then. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Alex Bowman, 30 out there. He's the closest guy to Almarola. So we'll see if he can somehow fight his way in. So I will see you guys in the next one where we decide the playoff grid in Indianapolis. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have yourselves a great day. I'll see you in the next one.